we are again. Entering Brimfield. It is Saturday morning, May 14th, 2022. Yesterday was Friday the 13th. <laughs> so that should mean today will not be an unlucky day. Yes, we're on our way back to Brimfield once again. There are some clouds in the sky. There is a possibility of rain by this afternoon. Hopefully, as always, that should pass. I've been trying for years to drag my friends and family to Brimfield. I've succeeded twice. Two of my uh, good friends have come with me. And they enjoy themselves immensely. It is right now about uh, quarter past seven in the morning. As you can see, there are already cars and trucks on their way. Within an hour or so, this road will be completely backed up for a mile or more. That's why I like to arrive here early in the morning. There are some vendors who start and open up on Saturday at the crack of dawn. So, I know from previous trips that there will be no shortage of things to see the moment we arrive. A little more than 10 years ago, there was an actual tornado that touched down here. And in the distance, you can still see the damage. There are a number of trees snapped off. Of course, nature has slowly been recovering from that. The parking is usually $5, $10, or $15, depending on where you want to park. The $15 lots are located immediately behind the uh, vendors, of course. Even the $5 lots are well within um, range or walking distance of the show. And Usually, I go to the $5 lots, even though at this time of the morning, you can pretty much pick and choose where you want to go. Morning. Will do. And after smearing on a whole bunch of sunscreen, it was time once again to spend a day searching for cast iron. I'm not sure why, but I almost always find something interesting within the very first few minutes upon arriving here at Brimfield. The guy selling these gave a price of $15 for the two. I considered it and decided I'd look for them if they were still there on my way out for the day. Not bad condition. And almost immediately, we came across the first major cast iron seller here at Brimfield. And here we go. This is one of the best reasons for a cast iron collector to come here to Brimfield. Even though the prices on these refurbished pieces are always sky high, it's amazing to just be able to see and touch these rare and astounding pieces of cast iron. There's 
There are so many interesting things to see at Brimfield and be tempted by, and not just the cast iron cookware as well. I was looking for the telltale ridge underneath the handle that would indicate a BSR pan. Uh -huh. And there we are. I see they are recognizing the brand now. The label actually said BSR and not just unknown skillet. <laughs> Quite a few vendors had one or two pieces of cast iron there for sale, and all too often it seemed to be overpriced. That seemed to be the case all too often with cast iron at Brimfield. However, I've learned from experience that if you have patience and are willing to do some digging, you can almost always find a good bargain there. And again, I've only been here a few minutes. Oh, so these are Wagner, this is uh, this Lodge. These unmarked Wagner Dutch ovens were very common, and it seemed as if the vendors hadn't recognized this style yet. Lately, I've been checking these wooden handle pans to see if they're BSR's Lady Best series. Almost always, though, they're made in Taiwan. And even though it's only 8 o'clock in the morning, people are starting to stream into Brimfield by the thousands. I have a friend I would love to take here just to go to this place. You can find cast iron or just about anything else anywhere here at Brimfield, but if there are two places that you definitely want to look, one would be Maze, which is right over there, and the other is here at the Brimfield Option Acres. It seemed as though every lot had their own vendor selling stacks and stacks of incredible and expensive cast iron. You name it, they had it here. 
both in vintage and modern, and sometimes it was even affordable. But here, here she died while my wife was in that same hospital, and they didn't even see each other because there's no COVID. Oh, yeah, they weren't. Yeah. Living so, in, you know, they came over and told my wife that her mother died, which. Or any of this stuff, I'm pretty flexible. Huh. I've really been meaning to give this recipe a try. This was where I'd scored an incredibly rare bunt pan last year, although I certainly wasn't expecting lightning to strike twice. No alternative but to strip it. But it came out nice. It came out really nice, yeah. Interested in the walking liberty for kind of an unusual reason. I don't know if you know. Cracker Barrel does its annual uh, cast iron pan every year okay. with an American theme, and this year they actually have a big cast iron skillet okay. with the image of the 1916 Walking Liberty on it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. And across the street to the next area to see what we could find. Last year I'd made two incredible scores here at Brimfield, but this year it was more typical. That still meant there was something interesting to see every few feet. My godson would go crazy for these. I was genuinely interested in this one, at least until I saw the $58 price tag. Thank you. 
five. Oh, so it's not large. If it is a large, okay, I'm wrong, it is a large. <laughs> This food grinder actually looked pretty tempting. Usually I've seen these irons with a much higher price tag than what we saw here. Supposed to be a glass lid to go over this. And this one was actually very interesting and I was sorely tempted. It seemed to be a recast based on an original Wagner. What is that? That's like 1800s I think, right? Unmarked? Maker? It is, it is unmarked, yeah. Yeah. Heat ring, $60. Hmm. That is good price. I had 120 on this. Hmm. Because of its size and all. Yeah, no, that actually wouldn't be a bad deal off no, of that. No, it is. It's my last day of the market. Everything <laughs> I sell, they don't have to bring home. <laughs> I understand that. It's kind of, it took me a lot of work to get them to look like that, but... And this old cauldron was extremely thin considering its size. While the shape of the ear suggested this was genuine vintage, possibly even 1700s. Nice boots. just last year. Now I know it's a John Wright. The food court marks the halfway point in Brimfield. After this, things look a little different. Once we're past the food court, the environment seems to change. Seems like there are more lots on this side of Brimfield that have big piles of stuff to sort through. They don't charge any more for the best booth than the last booth. Any of these places? This is good. We're going to put the regular. But the longer you've been there, the better 
chances you have of getting a better one when someone moves out and say, I want that one. No, there's no premium for location. Just your luck, if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. 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 So now Sam is free when she ordered vlogs. Yeah, I heard that. That's exactly what I was just thinking. <laughs> From the handle, you'd think this one would be BSNR. And another unmarked wagnet. As impressive as they were, by this point it was becoming rather tiresome to see more and more overpriced Griswolds. What's more, some vendors were even beginning to recognize BSR pans and they were raising their prices accordingly. Plated with e either maybe a nickel or chrome. Just a rub. Just a rub. Oh, 
And still the amazing sights kept on coming. Even when you're used to seeing overpriced Griswold and Wagner pans, something unusual still turns up when you least expect it. This is believed to be a fat handled wagon. The gentleman running this booth has been a regular every time I've been to Brimfield, and once I even saw him outside of Rochester, New York. And only a few yards down, here is another vendor who has been a regular every time I've been to Brimfield. But often some of the most interesting finds were made in rusty piles of junk like this. This might be Korean made. If I figure right. BSR. Almost certainly a Wagner. It's a lodge. Hmm. Very heavy. This might be an antique pot. Very heavy. That be worth looking into. Typical scotch bowl, and this one here is unfortunately cracked. Is there anyone that might be interesting? It might be this one. And this one even had vertical ears for the bale handle, too. I'm honestly not sure if this was vintage or Asian made. This one was so lifelike I had to double check to see if this was one of those living statues street performers. Immediately underneath, we have this. 
And finally we reach the farthest end of Brimfield with nothing beyond but the road and more parking lots. It was time to turn around and head back. However, even now there was still more cast iron to be found. And if you wanted to take the time to clean this up, this would definitely be a real find. However, it had been several hours, and I have to admit, I was getting really tired by now. And then, literally one minute before leaving Brimfield and returning to the car, I came across this treasure trove that I'd somehow missed at the beginning. And yet, I was feeling exhausted and ready to just head home. Until, out of the corner of my eye, I made a discovery that was truly astounding. And there it was, something I hadn't even known existed until I discovered a couple of pictures of it on the internet only a few years ago. What's more, the vendor really wanted to strike a bargain, and I ended up getting this for a total of $40. So, I went to the Brimfield Antique Show today, Saturday, May 14th, saw wonderful sights, and was proud of myself for not buying any cast iron, until this showed up 
quite literally uh, as I was walking towards the final exit to the car. <laughs> a Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain Series angled handled deep fryer. <laughs> this was one of those things that you simply do not want to pass up if you find it. Ugh. And so we come once again to the end of another adventure in cast iron at the Brimfield Antique Show. I love heading out to Brimfield, at least when the weather is good, because you're guaranteed to find something interesting there when you least expect it. And even though my passion is for antique cast iron, you can expect the same no matter what your hobbies and interests are. It's not expensive to come to Brimfield and browse, and even if you're on a low budget, you're still guaranteed to have a great time and see many things you've never seen before. And if you're not careful, you may end up scoring something you'll treasure for the rest of your life. So is it worth it to come back to Brimfield time and time again? Definitely yes. In fact, it's among the most fun a treasure hunter can have anywhere in the country, or even in the entire world.